what is this? The Spurs are making a legit push towards the playoffs? Playoffs? Gotta win a game first. What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to to TSR Sports. Much to the delight and some to the plight of you. The Spurs went 3-0 against the Golden State Warriors in a very tightly contested game. The Spurs laid the smack down on the Portland Trailblazers, who are clearly in tank mode. And then in another tightly contested game yesterday afternoon, the Spurs beat the Pelicans. Right now, Spurs fans, we are one game out of the play-in. The Pelicans and the Lakers and the Spurs are thinking it'd be a three-way race until the end of the season. It just so happens the Lakers play the Pelicans today. So if the Pelicans lose, I believe we will be a half game behind them. I don't remember what. It's it's tight. It is tight right now. And I know some of you are very happy we're winning. Some of you are not happy. It is what it is. We are the eighth overall pick right now. And I think the goal, for me at least, is that the Spurs make the play-in and then lose and still get a lottery pick and maybe win the ping-pong ball thing and get a top three pick. I know that's all best-case scenario, but I can be optimistic, can I? I just I can't root for the team to lose. Anyway... I'm going to get into my version of a report card. Drop a comment down below. What did you like about last week? What you didn't like? Hit that thumbs up if you're a Spurs fan. You like to support the channel. And subscribe for more Spurs content. It's time, my friends, for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Up first, our point guard, Mr. Triple, triple Double, who had another Triple Double last night. He had a very poor shooting performance, which I didn't realize. He was like 4 of 19. Anyway, DeJounte Murray thought this was a good and a bad week. Good because he did his normal DeJounte things. Averaging 29 and almost 8 rebounds, grabbing some steals. Being the floor general that we need out there on offense and defense. When he's not out there, the team does look lost at times. However, really struggled from the floor last week. Shooting only 39% from the field and 31% from the arc, which is generally what I expect from him. Low 30s in the arc, but really was just struggling with his shot. But that being said, it's obvious that the team needs him out there on the floor. Oh, don't hashtag me with the plus minus being like 6.7, the lowest out of the starting lineup. I know some of you like that stat, some don't. Anyway, there's not they just, uh, you know, some more of those shots going and they'll be okay. Up next, Devin Vassell, who did miss last night's game with a sore Achilles. And I'm just going to say right now, stop with the rumors. I was live for the game last night and people kept coming and saying Devin tore his Achilles. And that's not being reported anywhere. So this, this is not the channel for rumor nonsense. There are other... Channels that cover rumors, I don't unless I feel like there's facts to it. So right now, he's just out. And when he did play, how did he do? Kind of similar to DeJounte. I thought this was kind of a good and bad week. Scoring, rebounding, playing defense, two and a half steals per game. The odd thing with Devin last week is he made almost three-point field goals, which you see. He shot about 54% from beyond the arc, but his overall field goal percentage was 32%. He missed all of his two-point attempts. I don't... What? Now, Ridley lived up to that 3D player last week where he was playing defense and hitting threes, and everything between inside the arc just was not going in. That's just, he's in a little bit of a slump right now. Maybe the kills is bothering him on those two pointers. Oh, he was hitting a three. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. We're going to have another player that had a similar type week. We'll circle back to that in just a moment. What's up next? My man, Kellen Johnson. Thought he had a good week. You know, did his normal Kellen things 20 points per game, six rebounds, hitting some twos, hitting some threes. He was very aggressive in the paint last night. At times, I thought maybe forcing some shots, but he was making them, so I can't complain too much. And he had the huge game winner versus the Golden State Warriors. Special nod we should give, actually, to DeJounte Murray in regards to that Golden State win. He jumped in there and helped break up that defensive rebound GSW was going for, which helped Kelvin get that ball and get the game-winning shot. So if DeJounte doesn't break that up, too, you know, maybe that game winner doesn't happen. Kelvin will get credit for the game winner, but we should get a little, little nod to DeJounte for getting in there and, and help break up that rebound. So props, props to both, I guess. Joshua Primo started all three games, and I thought he had a good week. You know, he's not taking a lot of shots, but he looks comfortable on the court as a 19-year-old. And he's had his ups and downs this year, but he is starting. Yes, he was in the G League for some time. Maybe he could have used a little more G League to chip off some of those rough edges, but he's now starting games and getting quality minutes. He averaged 31.2 minutes per game last week and shot 52% from the field while dropping 10 points per game. And it just... What I love about this kid is even when he's missing shots, he's still taking shots. He's playing confident, and I'd like to see him get more involved in the offense if possible. There's a very small amount of games left before the season ends, but I think see, that might be pretty good with him. And one thing Josh is showing us, too, which I didn't realize he had in his game, he's showing an ability to finish at the rim. He's throwing down some thunder dunks of justice lately, and I was like, all right. I don't know you had that in you, young man. So maybe the, with the confidence going up, that's giving him more confidence to get in there and throw it down with some authority. I like what I'm seeing. Josh Primo, keep it up. T-U-R-T-L-E, Turtle Power, Jakob Pertl. This was a normal Jakob Pertl good week. 
Double-double, 11 points, 11 rebounds. But what I really like about Jakob, he was much more active with his block of Pirtle instincts as he averaged 3.3 blocks per game. And that's why I'd really like to see Jakob Pirtle if he plays with the Spurs next season. He's under contract. We don't know what's going to happen in the offseason. But I'd like to see him be a, you know, 12 points per game, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks. I'd really like to see those blocks go up. And uh, I, I like that. I mean, I like to see him a little more involved defensively if possible. What I think helped those blocks go up is the Spurs, and you see it on this roster here, Papa's running two big men a lot, not starting two big, two big men. He's still going with the small lineups, but there were a lot of times last week we had Jakob Pertl and Zach Collins, or Zach Collins and Jacques Lindell, or Jakob Pertl and Jacques Lindell at the court at the same time. This team gets crushed on the reboards on a regular basis, and having two big men out there, I think, lets Jakob do a little more work in the paint, gets, and lets him get more rebounds and more blocks. So I like the two big men out there. We draft the big men in the draft. Then, uh, yeah, we need two big guys out there. That's We've been saying this all year. Let's go to the bench. Up first, Josh Richardson. I mentioned a 3D player. I thought this was a good, bad week for Jay Rich, as he was almost similar to Devin Vassell, playing defense, giving a little bit of this and that, but really struggling from two-point land, but hitting his three-pointers. He shot 37% from beyond the arc, but overall shot 33% from the field. Uh, but he did average 16.3 points per game. And if you look at the Spurs, everybody had a plus in the plus minus out of the nine guys I have here, the main rotational guys. So Josh Richardson, I don't know what the Spurs are going to do with him, Spurs fans. Are we going to bring him back next season? I see some talks about maybe we can trade him, get get something. But I like having a veteran off the bench. Will that be Josh Richardson? Will that be Doug McDermott? Or will it be both? But I like having some guys that you know have some NBA experience, have maybe some leadership out there and Jay Rich and Doug McDermott would be absolute firepower from three point land off the bench. So maybe he comes back next season. I, he's been a pleasant surprise out of that Derek White trade. I wasn't expecting a lot. He has outperformed all expectations for me and he averaged a team high 35.7 minutes last week. So props to Jay Rich. Keep it up. Trey Jones. I thought this was uh, the usual Swiss Army knife type of week for Trey Jones where he did a little bit of scoring. For a small guy, usually the smallest guy in the court, he's always finding off uh, rebounds offensively and defensively, 4.3 assists. The only knock in Trey's game, which is why I gave him a good slash bad week, is his shooting. He just, teams are daring him to hit a three, and he hit a couple threes, and he just narrowly missed a three last night. His toe was on the line, but overall from the field, he shot 38%, 29% from threes, and teams are just going to keep leaving him open, and he's got to start. He doesn't need to shoot at a high clip, but he needs to start making, if you know, working in the offseason. Just at least become a 33% three-point shooter. So if you're hitting a one in three, teams aren't going to leave you open. But right now, they're just like, go for it. And he's going for it. And more often than not, it's failing. I don't know if Trey Jones is going to be our point guard coming back next season. Uh, time will tell. But I thought he's been decent off the bench this year. Up next, Zach Collins. I know some of you are a little critical of Zach. Remember, he hadn't played basketball in two years. And it's not often I'll defend a player. But not playing the game for two years, coming off a serious injury. Overall, I thought he had a good week. Now, yes, there were times I thought Zach Collins was forcing shots, especially last night in the paint when he was had the ball, getting double teamed and triple teamed. And instead of you know getting it out of there, he really forced a shot. Maybe he couldn't pass it out because of all the players around him. But just find himself in some tough situations at occasion. And I don't sometimes feel like he's always making the best decision. But that could also be because of how long he was out. He didn't have an offseason with these guys. He didn't have – he had so – you know, our players, they have the offseason, they have the preseason, and then they have, of course, all the regular games to get acclimated to the system. And I think Zach Collins is still, you know, he's been here for a few weeks, but he's played, what, two months, less than two months, six weeks. So I'm giving him a pass for this year. I know some of you don't want to give him a pass, but I'm giving him a pass. He's still young. He's a former lottery pick. I think next year will be the make or break year for him as a San Antonio Spur, as only half of his contract is guaranteed. And if he's not good like next year, then we move on from him. But this year, I got to give him a pass. I'm giving him a pass. And last but not least, Jacques Landell. A good week now. His week is mostly limited to the Golds, um, excuse me, the New Orleans Pelicans performance last night as he didn't play much against GSW or Portland. But last night, what a huge fourth quarter, which is why I'm giving him a, a good week. He scored 10 points and had seven rebounds in the fourth quarter. That is awesome. That, that that just, I mean, he helped us with that one. It was tied 84-84, I think, last night, going into the fourth against New Orleans. And Jacques Lindell was a huge part of that win last night. I don't know what his future is in San Antonio. If we have draft, end up drafting a center, this could be a one-and-donner. But uh, no matter what happens, he's had some big moments on 
or with the San Antonio Spurs this season. So Jacques Lindell, and hopefully he can capitalize after that fourth quarter and keep the momentum going. Anyway, and hopefully we see more two Twin Towers light lineups where we have two of our bigs out there. Because I like seeing two big guys out there getting rebounds, blocking shots, and causing havoc in the paint. Anyway, off to the bench. Or more of the bench. The players that uh, played very little are not out. Lonnie Walker still out, did not play. I, you know, could the Spurs rest him for the rest of the season? Have they seen enough to say, hey, we want to bring him back next season? Or we are sure we've seen enough that we don't want him back next season? Will Lonnie Walker play again, or is he is he done for this season? Is he done as a spurt? I have no idea. KBD came back. KBD, two games, 11 minutes a game. Played some solid defense. Gave him some length on the floor. He's He is a role player. I like him, but I think he is a very solid and good role player off the bench that's going to have those occasional games where he's like, man, this guy should start. He just scored 20 points. He scored 30 points on perfect shooting versus the Lakers. And then the next night, he'll go out and score two and just will disappear offensively. But can't complain. A guy that I prefer to be the 11th or 12th guy off the bench. He's been solid as a role player. Up next, Joe Wieskamp. Joe Mama. Woo, man. Joe Mama had an ugly week. Uh, he was um, 2 of 12 from the field last week, 17%. And he was throwing up some air balls and bricks on some of his shots. And I don't know if he's really tightly contested, contested games if, um, or he's struggling with, if the big moments just being the NBAs now or if he's at the rookie wall, whatever it was. He was awful last week, but much like Joshua Primo, he's working. My expectations were not high. He's going to have weeks where he struggles, and he had one last week. Romeo Langford did not play. Always injured. Where are Romeo? Oh, Romeo. Where art thou for Romeo? Is this going to be a one and done? Like, literally play one game with the Spurs and be done? Because he played one game with us, looked decent, and hasn't played since. Was injured when he came to us, played the game, injured now. We might not see him again. You guys are asking about Devontae Kaycock. He has been reassigned to the G League. I honestly don't think we'll see him again as a San Antonio Spur. And if you're not aware, Doug McDermott is out for the year with a sprained ankle. We won't see him until next season. Let's move on to my San Antonio Spur of the Week. Who do you got? Who do you got? Drop in a comment. Think who, who, who could the Spur of the Week be? Is it going to be DeJounte, who he's been most of the year? No. My man, my favorite current Spur, Kellen Johnson. Statistically, he had a good week. You know, that hustle, loyalty, respect is always out there. But the main reason he got the game of the week was, one, he did hit that game winner versus the Golden State Warriors. But two, something that may have fallen under your radar, it certainly fell under mine last night. I did not know in the NBA that after you score, you cannot touch the ball. Like all the time we'll see in the football, they'll score or something will happen and the player will throw the ball back to the ref or whatever. In the NBA, if you score, you cannot pick up the ball and throw it to the ref or throw it to the other team or you can't. And apparently that only really happened once in the game against the Pelicans. And I think maybe it was uh, Alvarado who scored last night for New Orleans. I, I don't remember whoever it is. Scored, grabbed the ball, and threw it to the ref. Now it's the second time that happened in that game. And apparently Kelvin Johnson pointed out to the ref, and I've seen some articles that think the reason there was a technical on that play is Kelvin went, whoa, 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 you can't do that. And then the refs called the technicals. It already happened, which led to one more point for the Spurs in a very tightly contested game. So just a little play. It's going to be a fall under the radar. Maybe it's not a big deal in your, your minds. But, you know, knowing the rules of the game, it's very important. And Kellen pointed out a rule that was broken, and the Spurs got a tee off of it. And while I was watching the game, I honestly didn't know that was a thing, but it makes sense. The other team's trying to get a fast break or whatever, and you're picking up the ball and delaying things. Then it's going you know, to be a first, what, a warning, and then a technical. So props to Kellen Johnson. Game winner had a good week. And this is where I'd like to see Kellen Johnson for the rest of the year. And I feel like this can be his role next season. 20 points per game, six rebounds. We've seen his assists go up. I, you know, DeJounte needs another guy with him scoring, and Kelvin's shown the ability to score in the paint and beyond the arc. So I like the progression we've seen in Kelvin Johnson's game, and he's he's tried some different things this season, and some people are critical of him. I think he's shown us enough that he can be our starting small forward for at least the next few years, but his game has got to continue to improve, which it has. He's going to have bad nights. He's a young player. He is inconsistent. Guys, most of this team is inconsistent. That's just the way it's been this year and the last few years. But I like where we're going. we got some draft picks coming up. Lots of draft picks. Just the question is, do we win and make the play-in? Do we make the playoffs, lose a lottery pick? I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't think the team will tank. It should be noted, while we have a fairly easy schedule coming up next week, we got the Rockets, Grizzlies, and Blazers. I definitely think we can go 2-1. Two, two and one. It's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, snow back-to-backs. I see speeding the Rockets, who are tanking. The Blazers, we've already knocked the crap out of them. I think John Morant's going to have another huge game and beat us on Wednesday night. And then we play the Blazers again the following week. And then the schedule gets really tough. And we could, we could looking at the last four games, lose the last four games of the year and miss the plane, which I know some of you want. So whatever happens, I'll be rooting for them. Win, lose, or tie. It's go Spurs go until I die. By the way, if you're not, if you didn't watch my 
video last night, or if you're wondering who's Rich wearing, I'm finally wearing a Tim Duncan jersey. Finally got one. Uh, so the Twin Towers are now there. I uh, have a member who said he might be sending me a Manu Ginobili jersey for sticking around the song, just sharing some stuff. And I think I'm going to get a TSR Sports P.O. Box. Um, just to close the video, I'm going to look into how much P.O. Boxes cost today. And if I, I don't think they're that expensive. And uh, I should get one anyway. A lot of you to talk about maybe sending a jersey like above. Somebody did last night. Somebody said, hey, I have some David Robinson cards I want to send you. I'm like, ah, I already got a bunch. And it was really just because I, I don't want to give up my home address for obvious reasons. But, um, you know, if you guys want to send merch and support the channel and have it be on the air, you know what? I shouldn't, I shouldn't say no to that. I think that's very nice and it's much appreciated. And if somebody wants to send me a jersey that I can hang up on the wall, then who am I to say no? Who am I to say no? Especially if you got an extra one. And this person said they had an extra one. So I'll get a P.O. box probably this week and put it in the comments or in the description and also put up a community post that I got one if somebody wants to send anything. Even if you want to send me a giant suck jersey, if those exist, <laughs> send one. I don't know. Or send me a number two jersey and say you have to put this on the wall for a stream. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Oh, please don't do that. Anyway, I'm rambling. If you stayed this long, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you all. I'll see you live tomorrow night for the Spurs and the Rockets. Until next time, and as always, go Spurs go!